Hello fellow creatures and wild things, I am Cheyenne or Earthy Arts, and in this video I am trying something that I never thought I would try before, and that is a 31 day challenge. Now I am not going to be doing this in 31 days because that's crazy for me, I don't want to get burnt out, so I'm just going to be doing 31 paintings, so technically it's a 31 list of prompts rather than 31 days, but I made it anyways because I need to practice stuff. So this video is mainly just going to be a voiceover of me talking about my goals and what I want to get out of this challenge. I'm going to be working on a painting of the Rocky Mountains in this video, so yeah. So, what is the prompt list based off of? Recently, I've been really into the podcast National Park After Dark and following artists that paint landmarks and parks around the US. So that got me thinking, what if I try and paint 31 landscapes inspired by the national parks here in the States? And so I took my idea over to Adobe Express, wrote down the list, and boom, there's the prompts. Okay, so it's a bit more deep than that, but really not that deep. So ever since I've gotten into photorealistic artwork, I have avoided backgrounds for like the longest time possible, either by not drawing them or blurring them out, because little circle blob things are so much easier to draw than trees. So as someone who doesn't draw backgrounds or landscapes, I thought that it would be a great idea to focus on just landscapes, <laughs> to devote my full attention to learning how to paint backgrounds and I honestly have no idea why I just never draw backgrounds other than the fact that I'm lazy. But I just never do. And as I'm working on the script right now, I'm looking at my wall of artwork and there's maybe one thing with a non-blurred background. And that is my little gnome named Brick. Now, some of his background is blurred, but some of it's not. So, I mean, I guess it counts. But, yeah. <laughs> Let's go over some of my goals of this challenge, whether it be that I actually do complete it in a month or not. Okay, number one, improve my landscape art. Obviously this challenge was created to help me better understand how to draw or paint landscapes because I suck at them. And I always avoid backgrounds or blur them out to the point of not recognizing what's in the background. So using 31 days or prompts, I should be able to see at least some improvement, whether it be technique or craftsmanship. Number two, improve my acrylic painting skills. Now, I don't suck at acrylics like I do with backgrounds. I just feel like I'm not too confident with the medium and I feel like I could improve a little bit if I devote enough time. Usually, if I'm given the option to choose between acrylics and oils, I will choose oils. So that's why I'm kind of forcing myself to use acrylics now because if I don't, I have no idea when the next time is that I will use them. And when I use acrylics, I generally use them as like a joke medium, if that makes sense. Like I don't really take them as serious as oil paints, and I feel like that's why the majority of my acrylic pieces feel like they're lacking. So putting effort in improving my acrylic skills should result in some positive outcome by the end of this like prompt list. Number three, exploring new styles. Lately I've been in an art block or burnout kind of state, and I've just kind of gotten used to it, and I know it's because I never change up what I do. So for this challenge, I wanted to complete the, these artworks in a totally different style than what I'm used to. Giving myself the opportunity to make something different allows myself to open up more creatively, not worry too much about the perfection of my photorealism style. So doing this may help me find out that maybe I do enjoy working in this style a lot too. Number four, having a portfolio or a series of artwork. If you know me, I cannot commit to anything. I suck at completing challenges, I have too many work in progresses that I've never finished just because I get bored, and I just never have the energy to create a long-standing series of artwork. So with this challenge, I want to build up a series of paintings and have like a mini portfolio of national park paintings. 
Even in my portfolio that I submitted and got accepted to SAIC and the Hyde Art Institute didn't really have any connecting artworks or series. They were all just individual artworks that seemed nature-y in some kind of way and I was like, that is good enough. That is good enough. So I just hope this challenge allows me to have a complete series of paintings to put together in a portfolio or something. And then number five is to have fun while making art. This one is probably the most important goal for me because I absolutely hate being in this stuck phase of like, this type of art is boring, I don't feel like doing this, or this takes too long. I just want to enjoy what I'm doing in the moment. Now don't get me wrong, I still love realism and spending hours on a piece. It just gets exhausting after doing like an 18 hour piece, after a 7 hour piece, after a 10 hour piece, and I just want this challenge to help me unwind. So with all the other goals in mind of like improving my landscape skills, improving my acrylic skills, exploring new styles, having a portfolio, these will all hopefully help me just enjoy creating to create, if that makes sense. <laughs> Now that we've got the goals out of the way, I want to talk about what I'm planning to do with all these artworks because what would you do with 31 paintings? Like that's a lot. So recently I've been working on my little notion page with my goals for the year and it got me thinking. If I eventually want to make money off my art and open up a shop, I'm going to need a crap ton of product. Now opening a shop isn't even in my mind for this year and it's probably going to happen around like 2024. Cause like, I do want to invest in a nice printer and scanner in order to improve the quality of my products and sell like high quality prints and stickers before I even open up a shop. And that also gives me time to debate whether I want to sell on Etsy or not. And now I know having fancy equipment isn't really the first thing that should be on my mind when opening a shop, but I mean, it is for me. I want to have high quality product from the get go. That way it's nice and professional from the start. So once I have like a printer and a scanner, I want to either make these like into postcards or stickers or like mini prints or something. Cause I feel like postcards would be great because they're like locations and that just kind of goes along with the vibe of a postcard. But also stickers would be super fun to do because like I could do like a mystery pack or like a random pack of three to five stickers. That way I'm able to like sell stickers of all of them rather than just a couple of paintings. So I could buy less individual stickers but overall have like a variety i don't know if that makes sense it made sense in my head but like have all the stickers but like have like five of each or something like that and just like mix and match i don't know it made sense in my head i don't know if it makes sense as i'm talking but th that's what i wrote down now i would like to end the video with me saying this this is not a closed challenge in any way and i would love to see others participate in it and how they would perceive the challenge whether you're a painter, drawer, digital artist, literally whatever, I just love to see your art. And feel free to tag me in it as well. I have the original 31 day prompt list over on Instagram if you all are interested in checking it out. It has a hashtag along with it, that way we can see all the art in one place. Thank you guys for watching. If you're interested in seeing more from me, feel free to check out my Instagram and Facebook down in the description. And it'd be great if you guys hit the like button and subscribe. Until next time, have a good morning, good evening, and good night. And go outside and enjoy the beginnings of spring if you're in the northern hemisphere. If you're in the southern hemisphere, I think it's fall or something. So go enjoy both of those. See you guys later.